Hi again, it's Steve Grisetti, your man from Movie Picks and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part five of our eight part basic training for Premiere Elements. And in this session, we want to talk about adding effects. Now, often when we think of effects, we think of big special effects, but the thing to remember is that not all effects are going to be big and showy, and they're not all going to be special effects. Some are just subtly enhancing the scene. And as with transitions, you can often say more with a whisper than a shout. You can make your scene look better, more realistic, or it can capture the atmosphere of a scene even better as you add colors, gradation, and other effects to the timeline. We've got our playhead set on our timeline. I'm going to select a clip on the timeline and go over to the right hand side. And going down the toolbar to the right, I'm going to select Effects. Now, just like transitions, effects can be added in quick view as well as advanced view, and the process is essentially the same. I've got over 90 effects here, both audio and video. And I can browse through them either by going through the list of all of them that I see right now in the panel. I can go to specific categories. Or I can just go to this little magnifying glass and I can just type in the effect that I want to locate. For instance, if I select stylize. These are my stylize effects. I'm going to select find edges and drag that down onto the clip on my timeline. And you can see it makes it into sort of a pencil sketch almost. Pretty cool special effect. Once you add an effect to a clip on your timeline, the effects control panel opens on the right hand side of the workspace. If it's not open, you can simply select the clip on the timeline and go over to the FX with a little pencil on it button and that will open the effects control panel where we can adjust the effect. Here's find edges and we have the option to blend with the original. I toggled this open and now using the slider, I can make it more pencil like or blend it with the original just by dragging on the slider here. I can make it look more like a sort of colored pencil drawing all the way up to its original, depending on how much I want to blend it with the original. Now every effect has controls, and with these controls we can do a tremendous amount of customization. To remove the effect from our clip on the timeline, we just go over here to the effects control panel and click on the trash can. That will get rid of it. Another effect I like to demonstrate with is the crop effect, and I can do that in a couple of ways. One is I can go here to the FX panel and type in crop, or if I go over here to the left-hand side of the timeline, I can select a more intuitive crop control that allows me to make changes right on the program monitor. But let's turn that off for now. I'm going to go to the traditional route, type in crop as the effect I want to locate, Drag that down onto my clip. Now you notice cropping, unlike in, say, Photoshop, cropping doesn't change the frame size itself. It only changes the shape and the crop of what appears within the program monitor's frame. So in other words, this frame will remain a 16 by 9, 19, 20 by 1080, even if we crop off the image inside it. So if I select these various tools, and just sort of drag across. I can, I can toggle them open and use the slider, or I can just drag across the numbers, click and drag. I can actually crop, and I could do an animated crop if I used keyframing, which we'll talk about in our next session. Now, if I want to do it more intuitively, if I just select the crop listing here on the effects panel, you notice that I get little handles that appear within the video clip on the program monitor itself. And here I can do a more intuitive crop just by dragging on those corner handles. Now, as I say, there are audio effects as well as video effects. If you go to the audio effects listing, you see we have effects here that have notch filters for removing sounds at certain frequencies, for affecting the frequency level, uh, getting rid of the lower end or the lower frequencies to make audio sound like it's coming through a telephone rather than through a loudspeaker. There are echoes you can add. All kinds of audio effects are available here on the audio effects panel. And you can add them just as you can video effects and customize them using the effects control panel. Now these effects do not necessarily have to be static. In other words, you don't just add an effect and leave it there. You can control it and change the levels of it or change what is cropped 
and actually have an animated crop that moves in from, say, a close-up of this woman's face to widen out to the whole shot. You can create all these using keyframing. Now we're going to look at the basics of keyframing in our next tutorial. A little more advanced, but allows you to do some animation and really do some high-level special effects. That's coming up in part six of our eight-part series. That's keyframing, and I hope I see you then.